Little Women, by Louisa May Alcott. These are the characters. On the left is Mrs. Margaret March. This is Meg. This is Joe, Amy, and Beth. Chapter One. Christmas time. I hate being poor when it's Christmas," complained Meg, looking down at her old dress. "I know, Christmas without presents just won't be the same," said Joe. "It's not fair. The other girls have lots of nice things," said Amy sadly. But we've got father and mother, and each other," said Beth, quietly from her corner. All four girls were sitting around the fire in the living room. They were waiting for their mother to come home. Their father was away at war, like many others. Father won't be with us," said Meg. Mummy says that it is going to be a hard winter for everybody, especially for all the soldiers in the army. That's why we must forget about presents. For a moment, they all thought about what they wanted for Christmas. They each had a dollar. Joe wanted a new book. Meg, something pretty to wear. Beth, some new music for her piano. Amy, some new pencils to draw with. Their father had been a rich man once, but had lost all his money when the girls were still little. I love to go and fight with. Papa, instead of staying here and knitting socks for the army," said Joe. "Oh, Joe," said Beth, laughing, "you're more like a brother than a sister to us, so we need you here to protect us." They all laughed. Then suddenly, Amy looked at the clock on the wall above the fire. And saw that it was six o'clock. The girls immediately forgot all their worries, and Beth put her mother's slippers near the fire. Mummy really needs new slippers. These ones are so old, she said. I'll buy her new slippers for Christmas," said Joe immediately. No, I will. I'm the eldest," said Meg. "Why don't we all buy her something instead of a present for ourselves?" suggested Beth. "What a wonderful idea, Beth!" said the others all together. "I'll buy her some gloves," said Meg. "I'll get her new slippers," said Joe. I want to give her some handkerchiefs," said Beth. "And I'll give her a little bottle of perfume, so I'll have some money left to buy my pencils," said Amy. The others all laughed. Amy was the youngest, so she was allowed to be a little selfish. It would be a lovely surprise for their mother. They decided to go shopping the following afternoon. Then the girls started talking about the play they were preparing for Christmas night. It was a family tradition, and they always all had fun. When Mrs. March arrived that evening, she found her four lovely daughters chatting happily around the fire. That night. She had a special surprise for them, a letter from their father. It was full of stories about Cam life, but he never complained once about anything.
everyone cried at the end and missed him even more. Our child will not be wild, and be what he loves to call me, a little woman, and do my duty here," said Joe. Before going to bed, Beth played the old piano and the old song as they did every night. Christmas morning arrived, and Joe woke up first. She called the others, and they went downstairs to see their mother. But she wasn't there. She's probably out helping someone," said Hannah, who had lived with them since Meg was born, and was more of a friend than a servant to them all. Just then, Mrs. March came in. "Merry Christmas, my lovely girls." She said, kissing each of them. "Where have you been?" asked Joe. "Near here, there's a mother with six hungry children, and a baby. They have nothing to eat or drink. Will you give them your breakfast, my sweet daughters, as a Christmas present?" asked Mrs. March. She already knew they'd say yes, and soon they all carrying baskets of food over to the unfortunate family. When they arrived at the Hamlet's poor house, Hannah made a fire, and the girls gave the hungry children the food. Once back home, the girls had bread and milk for their Christmas breakfast, but they were happy. Especially when they gave the mother the presents they had bought. That evening, the girls had fun acting for their friends. At the end of the play, Mrs. March. Told them all to come to the kitchen for supper. Everybody was surprised to see the table full of ice cream, cakes, biscuits, sweets, and chocolates. When old Mister Lawrence heard what you did for the Hamlets, he decided to send you these things," explained their mother. Mister Lawrence was an old gentleman who lived in the big house. Next door with his grandson, but they didn't know them very well. Remember when the cat ran away and the grandson brought it back? Asked Joe. We started talking, then he saw Meg coming and walked off. We must try to speak to him. I'm sure he's lonely, she said. Next morning, Meg and Joe. Received an invitation to a party on New Year's Eve. Meg was very excited, but also worried about Joe's dress. Like hers, it was old, but at least Meg's wasn't burnt at the back. Joe, who didn't care so much, promised to stand against the wall all night. The night of the party. The girls looked very pretty, despite their unfashionable clothes. Meg put on high-heeled shoes, which hurt her, but she wore them just the same. At the party, Meg talked to the other girls. Joe stood against the wall. She was bored, so found a dark corner to hide in. Suddenly, she realized there was somebody else there. It was the Lawrence boy. They both laughed, and soon they were having fun, talking about everybody at the party. Laurie seemed interested in Meg, and said how pretty she was. Then, Joe heard Meg calling her. She was sitting on a sofa, holding her ankle. She couldn't walk. 
I knew you hurt yourself with those shoes. Now how am I going to get you home? said Joe. Don't worry, said Laurie. I'll take you home in my grandfather's carriage. Oh no, it's so early. You can't want to leave the party already, said Meg. Don't worry, I always go home early, said Laurie. So that night, the girls went home in a beautiful carriage, the perfect end to a brilliant evening. Next day, however, both girls had to go back to work. Meg to the four spoiled children she taught, and Joe to Aunt March, who was always in a bad mood.